I'm getting dressed to go to the studio. I burnt myself with a curling iron. Uh, or it was like a waving iron thing. Uh, it's like my second time burning myself with that thing, so it's a little dangerous. Um, I was just thinking about some things. So this is the first time I've had a um, like a studio outside of my home in a long time. Um, right after undergrad, I shared a studio that was outside of my home for a while. Um, and, it, you know, I wasn't, I was like, so on one hand, it's cool because you can kind of treat it like a job and you can sort of like, you know, I don't know, plan that way. Like I'm going to do this many hours in the studio and stuff. Um, but I don't know, like, I think I, I think I'm the kind of person that just likes having it in my home. Um, I mean, it's been interesting to think about because like, for example, I, you know, I use what I wear as a way to sketch ideas and bring art ideas out of, um, sort of art spaces and into everyday life. And, it's cool. It's cool because people come up to me and they talk to me here on the streets about what I'm wearing. And that's sort of the goal is to have an art conversation with anybody, not just in an art gallery. But on the other side of that coin, and I forgot about it, <laughs> is that, um, you know, when I'm at home, I I have like certain days that I go out in public and I'm sort of being my, my art self. And it takes a lot of energy because you're like the center of attention. Like you, I command a lot of space because I'm, I'm tall and I'm visually loud. And, um, you know, some days you just want to like get in the studio and work and, and you don't want, like when I work in the studio at home, I like, I'm in my pajamas and I'm with my cats and I'm like, um, it doesn't like I can be more um, more calm because I'm I'm comfortable, so I'm putting like a lot of energy. I'm not putting energy towards activating what I'm wearing. I'm putting energy towards what I'm making. But now, if I'm like going out in public, like I'm not gonna like wear my pajamas, you know. So so I have to get like you know dressed dressed to some sort of my standards. Um, so yeah, that's been interesting of like having you know, wanting to stay home and just have a pajama day where I get stuff done. And in, in my Kentucky life, that would be in the studio, but I would like be in my home. So I'd be in my pajamas with my cats. Sorry, I'm working this out in the moment. And um, so that's kind of an interesting thing. And then the other thing is like, I really needed a marker last night, but all my markers are in the studio. And so, yeah, I think having my stuff in two different places is a little disorienting. I feel a little like I don't know, like two people. And there's a lot of like, a lot of stuff I've got to like pack up and get ready to take to the studio. So I feel like, you know, getting dressed and packing all this stuff, it feels like it's time that like, if I was at home, I would have just walked down the steps and walked into the studio. So it's like eliminating um, a lot of time um, that I could be spending on the work. So these are just observations because I know some people that like thrive in having an external studio and they can like, you know, have art time and non-art time. But I think in my world, like, I want non-art time to be very, like, I, I hope to, in my entire lifetime, I hope to, like, get rid of it altogether. Like, I want all my life to be art time. Um, the other thing is, I keep thinking about that, um, I went on that field trip and uh, saw demos with paper art, and I keep thinking about it because I just, I feel like I wasn't thinking big enough with paper until I saw that demo, and... I really want to, so when I was in grad school, I wore paper every day for a year um, as part of my wearable explorations. And when I had my show at the CAC in 2019, I couldn't get over how much that project was still impacting people. So I decided at that show that in 2023, which would be 10 years since the project, um, that I was going to do it again. And I still have all the original paper and obviously I'll revisit it in new ways, but I'll use the the original artifacts as as my starting point. Um, so yeah, I was thinking about how maybe I can even think bigger with the paper now that I know, um, that paper can be things that I didn't realize it could be. So, um, it just goes to show that maybe, you know, maybe I could have gone at that field trip, like, oh, I'm like a time-based, um, textile artist. I'm not really a paper artist. Um, because I just decided that I want to say yes to as much as I am physically able to, <laughs> mentally and physically able to while I'm here. And so I was like, yeah, I'll go. Um, and I'm still thinking about it. It was really good. Um, 
So yeah, sorry that was a little bit of a brain dump as I was kind of walking through the differences between having a, a studio in your home and a studio outside of the home. Um, so we'll see. I'll, I'll report back in as we go how I'm feeling about it. I think also it's just like a big adjustment period that like I had a way of working that, you know, was, was efficient and I would get stuff done and now I'm having to like shift the way I work and um, you know, find where to get all the things I need. And, you know, like I really needed to print out some patterns. And I had this epiphany last night that I could project because I brought a projector with me, I could project the shapes onto the wall and trace them out because I traced, I brought tracing paper. Um, so I'm like having to adapt in a lot of different ways. So I think it just gives me a lot to process and think about. I'm going to finish getting ready. Okay, I'm getting closer to getting ready. Um, I don't think I'm going to put on lipstick because I'm going to wear a mask and I'm not really planning to engage with anybody. I mean, if somebody does, that's fine, but I'm mostly just going to the studio to work. Um, then I wore my cosmic mustache because I've been missing my husband. And that's a big part of my studio practice is Clint and I, are, our studios are right next to each other. And we're often like talking to each other and bouncing things off of each other and laughing at things together. So again, it's like a little bit of a shift to like have my studio practice be um, in more individual. Um. <laughs> also, I love, I always love the colors in my hair after I just washed it. Like they're just, for some reason, they're always like a little bit brighter, um, fresh being dried. I don't know if they just like collect schmutz all during the week or something, but it gets like on the darker side. And then, you know, whenever I, not, you know, whenever I get to wash it, um, so yeah, I just, I think it looks, I think the colors look really good today because it's just been washed. Okay, so see, I'm dressed and ready to go to the studio. I just had to put a mask on because masking's pretty, <clears throat> it's pretty constant here. Um, it's very strict, understandably, because a lot of people live in the city. Um, and I have a lot of layers on and I also have an umbrella because things have been shifting very quickly and you just need to be able to go from like warm to cold, so... Um, and then here I'll show you what I'm bringing. So here's all the food that I'm packing because um, I don't want to waste time going to track down food. And then here's my two bags that I'm bringing. Uh, I think I'm ultimately going to try to make like a new backpack that I won't have to bring two bags, but we'll see. So that's what it takes to get all ready to go to the studio. <laughs> Are you just buying stuff at the corner market? Okay, is this too big of a bag, lol, <laughs> a backpack? Um, so I'm thinking there would be like an outer, a big outer pocket here with another outer pocket here. And then there would be another big welt pocket here. <laughs> an elastic pocket here for like an umbrella and a water bottle. There would be two backpack straps here. And then... Rah, I'm thinking there would be two snaps here in case it's feeling too big. Whoa. Same here, two snaps in case it's feeling too crazy. And then inside, that would be a laptop pocket, um, maybe an open pocket and an open pocket, meaning like no closure. And then two more welt pockets here for like money and keys and stuff like that. Um, I don't think there would be a closure here either. And that would all be in the lining. And then I also want to do um, like handle straps too, in case I want it to be more of a, um, like of a side bag. So my question is, is it too tall <laughs> and too wide? I guess I'm just sick of always having like 35 bags. So I want to make this out of like super strong denim. I'm definitely channeling my inner Eevee because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pockets. I feel like Eevee would be super proud. The other question I have is, should I keep it rectangle like this or should I round the corners? I think I'm leaning on rectangle because then I can easily slide my laptop right there and then I can put books and things at the bottom. I don't know. I also want to be able to use this like a carry-on bag. So I'm wondering if this needs to come in like an inch on the side. I'm wondering if this, the panel on the side is too big. I have to follow up because I felt like I went into today feeling like frustrated about my studio not being in my where I'm living. 
Uh, but I actually had like a crazy productive day. But to be fair, I have been listening to a book on ADHD productivity because um, I have ADHD. And I utilized some of those tips today. So maybe it's a combination of like going there with the intent to get stuff done and then just like working hard the whole time. And now that I'm home, I'm having a hard time focusing on stuff I wanted to do at home. But I don't know if that's because I'm just tired and my brain is fried or if it's because this space is more like a space to chill. So I don't know, a little trial and error. Okay, today's Tuesday. I think it's May 17th. Um, so I, they, the residency's been sending me my schedule for the week on Sundays, and then I can kind of, I mean, they've given me kind of an overall month, like, framework, and then they give me, like, a more specific schedule with addresses on Sundays. So, um, and then I kind of plan around that. So I have events almost every evening this week and it you know I mean the meetings are definitely that would because it's like a one-on-one -on -one meeting that would be pretty bad for him if I just like didn't <laughs> go to those meetings like that's a professional exchange um, whereas the events in the evening they're like exhibitions and openings and events and things that are highly recommended that I go to and a lot of them are other artists doing the residency so you definitely want to like show up and support and stuff um, I have not done a like late night event since I've been here yet. I thought about doing one on Saturday, but I was still kind of bouncing back from that cold and um, it was raining and, it, and I just was kind of like, I think I just need to rest. Um, but so I'm a little nervous about it because I live kind of far away by myself. Um, and, you know, I was thinking about how when I lived in Japan, I did not, I lived in Japan for a year in 2009 and I did not dress like myself that year. I mean, I wore colors because I can't help it but I tried to like pull back a lot because I'm six foot one, um, I'm, I was a foreigner. And so I already was kind of like putting a target on my back and I didn't want, you know, especially since my Japanese was very, um, you know, I could speak to like a toddler or something. So if I got into some sort of trouble or danger, I couldn't really communicate what's going on. So um, for safety reasons, I pulled back a lot on sort of my wearable, um, sketching and yeah and I, I had you know I lived in New York City before 20 years ago almost it was 19 years ago when I was 18 and I definitely I mean I wore like weird Lindsay costumey type stuff but um, more like a collage of like thrift store uh, costume store kind of things my mom teases me because I brought three suitcases for like a two-month trip because <laughs> I just lived in New York for that summer for a workshop I did at Pratt. Um, and I brought moon boots <laughs> because, of course, um, I might sneeze. I'm going to pause. So in any event, I feel nervous about coming home late at night like all these events start at like between seven and nine, but it takes me like 45 minutes to an hour to get home. And then I would be walking home in the dark. My friend Jamie bought me um, a, some pepper spray, which was really nice. Uh, gosh, I'm gonna sneeze again. And my mother-in-law bought me one of those stabby kitty <laughs> keychains. So, um, and hopefully, you know, I lived in Chicago for two years and I came home dressed in all kinds of goofy Lindsay stuff. So hopefully I'm just like in my head about this. Um, so anyways, I'm going to an event tonight and I'll test it out. I'll see how I'm feeling about coming home late. You know, I definitely can always take a lift if I'm like freaked out or something. Um, I think I just, you know, I just haven't lived by myself in a while. I'm going to eventually have a roommate. Um, yesterday my roommate was supposed to come and there were some issues preventing it um, so that so so yesterday I worked from home and I had a meeting with my collaborator Ben Benjamin Cook who we're doing this collaborative um, uh, Ben and I are have been developing this 40 flag work together and we sort of like go in our own directions and come together and um, we started working on it last November and that's kind of what I'm focusing on this summer 
because I, when we hung it last November, I just loved how people were so eager to engage with it. Um, that was really exciting for me. And there was just a lot, I felt like we'd only like scratched the surface of it in November. So I wanted to dig into it a little bit more this summer, which by the way, Clint said that I should talk about um, some of the stuff I'm working on in the studio too. So I'll try to do that later today, but you know, the, the studios are open. <laughs> like people could hear me. So they're gonna be like, who is that person? Like they're open at the top. Um, so you can hear other people. And so they're gonna be like, who's that person talking to herself? So sometime this week, cause I'll be at the studio a few times. If there's not that many people on my floor, uh, maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll do a little studio explanation and tour. Um, but yeah, so yesterday Ben and I met on Zoom to just kind of talk about our goals and ideas for this project. Um, and that was good because it forced me to like put all my ideas together. I put together some worksheets because that's just how I like, I have to like see my head on paper to like make sense of it. But I haven't yet found any place to print anything out here. I may have to stop by a library or something. Um, so studio all day today and I was just getting ready and I was just thinking about how you know, I would dress very Lindsay to go to an event, but usually in the studio, I just wear like my pajamas because I want to focus on the work. And sometimes what I wear can be kind of like cumbersome and distracting. And, um, so I'm kind of dressing a little bit t on the comfortable side. Um, but I am wearing shoes with a heel and I'm going to bring flip flops if I have to change out in the studio. So again, it's like, I'm having to think differently, process differently to transition through the day, to be able to work in the studio, but still be myself and be communicating through what I'm wearing. And so just like a lot of choices to make. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm about to respond to a bunch of emails and um, probably read a little bit. I'm trying to like set reading times each day. And then I'm gonna cook some food to take with me. Uh, and then I'm gonna head to the studio and then I have this event tonight around seven and then tomorrow, if I have the energy, I may even go into Manhattan. I was gonna do it over the weekend and then things change, things shifted. Um, I really wanna see a few shows that are downtown and I really wanna go to the downtown library where Ghostbusters was filmed. Um, so I don't know why I said it in that weird voice. And then Thursday I have a studio meeting with a curator who I'm excited to talk to and there's an event, there's an event tomorrow night and Thursday night. I don't think there's an event Friday night, but we do have a field trip Friday morning and uh, last week's field trip was so amazing. So I'm hoping this week's will be just as good. And then this weekend there is events. Um, some of the other residents in my residency program have open studios. So I'm gonna try to make it to those. Um, and then I have some friends in the city um, that like used to live in Cincinnati and now live in this area. So I might try to see if one of them wants to come with me to the open studio. Um, Cause I'm missing, I'm missing people. It's just, I'm a, I'm a very social person and artist and I, um, I miss my people. I love having all this time to focus on my work, but I'm kind of missing my people a little bit. Uh, my cats, <laughs> I just, uh, I'm not used to all this alone time. Uh, So yeah, so that's the plan. That's the plan for, for today and this week. Yeah, and so in a lot of ways, I think I'm kind of glad I didn't go to the event on Saturday because I, when I got my schedule for the week, I was like, dang, that is a packed schedule. So um, maybe it's good that I got a little bit of rest and recovered from that cold. And um... One more thing is I listened to this guided meditation on it was like, I don't know, how to have a productive day and stuff. And sometimes I just, before I get started working, I like to just like clear my mind. But they were talking about how we are architects of our day and sort of like dreaming about what we want to build our day into. And my shape language with Lorraine Whipple, um, she said her language is the language of 3D and architecture. I also think her language in my work has got some video stuff too, but... Um, she after she gave me that prompt i realized that like i don't even think in 3d like i think in 2d and it's been shocking to try to get my mind to think in 3d um so after i listened to this guided meditation i started to think about because to-do lists really stress me out like lists and emails and lots of text i don't know for some reason that really like 
my brain just freaks out. Um, so I've been making architectural to-do lists <laughs> for my day. And I've been trying to learn Blender, the program Blender, so that I can make sort of 3D structures and then populate my to-do list in there. And it's just been kind of fun. It's like making my to-do list a game and it's like less stressful, so. It's taking me longer to get through my emails and get all packed up, but um, this is all the food I'm bringing with me to the studio. I just find that hunger is like a big distraction for me and I don't want to waste time to like go get food or have to order food and go down and get it. Like I just want to like work and then take food breaks if I need to. So I just pack all this with an ice pack. And then I also always have like an emergency granola bar in my backpack because I just hate traveling, you know, getting going places when I'm hangry. <laughs> so, and like I said, I'm going to be gone all day. So this is food that I'm going to munch on all day, so. Whew, it's really bright. Um, I just got to the studio and it's packed here today. And like I said, I feel totally weird um, talking in my studio because everybody can hear you. I also missed, two di this is the second time I missed my train stop coming to the studio um, because I just am like focused on something else. And but So I got a nice walk. I found a new coffee shop because I missed my stop. Um, but I wanted to come out and record because I wanted to record an authentic reaction. Um, on my trip here, I got an email from the Art Academy of Cincinnati where I teach. Um, I had applied for the, um, I think it's called the Adjunct Practice Grant. Uh, I'll drop the name of it. Um, and I had applied last year too. Um, and they had notified me that they are awarding me that grant. and. Um, <laughs> a lot of emotions like shocked really I mean honestly like since grad school I have applied to like two to three things a month consistently and don't hear back from much <laughs> and that just goes to show that like it's taken like eight or nine years but this summer or this year you know I had the opportunity to do this residency I heard back from that application and then um, you know having their this grant support that experience is huge, huge. And, you know, I had talked to some of the people before we came, my roommate and I, we talked to some of the people who did this program last year, which was so amazing and insightful. And they gave us such great tips. They were also from artists from Kentucky that the Great Meadows Foundation funded um, to come and do this residency. And um, one of the artists was saying that she had no issues with the stipend because she had another grant to like help support that. And I, I was definitely stressed about making things work for the, I have two exhibition opportunities. I have an open studio on June 3rd and 4th, and then I'm doing some kind of, I'm not sure what it is yet, but for the residency, it sounds like a niece, my, it sounds like my roommate and I might do a um, <clears throat> exhibition and or performance on Governor's Island sometime in July. Um, you know, so to get supplies and things for that and to just like the bare minimum cost to live and, um, and traveling to and from New York in a U-Haul is actually quite expensive, but it was cheaper than buying all my supplies up here. <sighs> so, um, so I feel like I can take this huge breath because it feels like it feels like some of the ideas I had might be doable, <clears throat> and just the support and gratitude I have for the school for believing in, in this experience for me, believing in this experience for me. But at the same time, I also feel kind of sad because I know, I'm sure a lot of my other adjunct colleagues applied to this grant and they're like all, everyone I work with with the Art Academy is incredible. I love working there. I love the people there. It's like a family. Um, so I wish, I wish I was like a, a funding fairy and could give them all the funding. So I'm like relieved and happy and grateful and, um, and feeling for them at the same time. some nitty gritty number stuff. I mean, the other issue is that I normally work like three jobs in the summer to cover my expenses in Kentucky. So we've had to make a lot of adjustments and work together to, and sacrifices to, to make that work. So yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to, um, like I was just shocked all the way here and I'm just, I'm like processing it live <laughs> for this documentation, but yeah, so grateful.
Okay, I just got back. Whoa. Okay, I just got back from my crazy day. So, um, just some things. <laughs> so I'm still, I'm still thinking about that amazing award that the Art Academy gave to me. Um, I just feel so honored. But then also, <laughs> and I was talking to my friend Sky about this last night, like, there's times where I really feel the pressure of this experience and I'm just like, I should be doing everything and I should go to everything and I should make so much stuff, like putting all this pressure on myself. Like I'm in New York City, I should be like doing everything I can. And I do want to, I do want to do as much as I can, but I want to find the, like, I want to find some kind of a balance. Like I don't want to constantly be guilting myself if I, I don't know, you know, if I'm too tired to go to something or if I, I just, I want to, like, I'm, I'm aware that I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself and I'm just trying to be like curious about it and understand it. But I noticed it, um, when I found out about this award, I'm not a very good, like award and gift receiver to begin with. I'm like, I never know how to react, <laughs> but, um, all of a sudden my thoughts were immediately going to like, oh my gosh, what if I don't live up to everybody's expectations? And I hope that I like, you know, that I make good on this award and that I make them proud. And, uh, I mean, I think it's just our weird lizard brains that we, um, we put all this pressure on ourselves and we immediately like self doubt anytime something happens, or at least that's how my brain works. Um, so I found myself being like, you know, Oh my gosh, I hope that I like live up to the award and things like that, which all I can do is like go to as much as I can and work as hard as I can and be as authentic as I can. And that's what I was planning to do anyway. So, um, I'm sure it'll all be great. It's just, I was just noticing like that I was immediately hitting some of those zones, thought zones. Um, so I went to that event tonight and it was really cool. I saw some artist talks. I challenged myself to ask a question at each one. Um, uh, cause that's one of the ways I'm documenting this experience is through the questions I ask. Um, so some insights from today in the studio, uh, I, you know, when I had my show at the CAC in 2019, which was another really big impactful moment in my life, I made this playlist of sports motivational talks. That was another time where I had some self doubt creep in and I had to overcome that. And I overcame it with these, I made this playlist of these like sports motivational talks where they're like, if stuff gets hard, you gotta do it hard. It's like really funny. They're like yelling at you and it's like, get up and do it and stuff like that. And for some reason that playlist was really what I needed to um, bust all that work out. Um, but so for this experience, it's funny how I really need a playlist for the any experience to begin. But when I'm in the studio, I've invited just any of my friends and family to contribute songs to a playlist. And I said that my vibe was like confidence and productivity. Um, and it's been such a joy. Uh, like, it's like, cause you know, I'm missing my people at home and like, I can tell when certain songs come on, who put it in. I'm like, ah, I know who did that. Um, and then my husband put our wedding song on there, but he didn't tell me. And so it came on and I was like, ah. Because we didn't actually have a first dance. We had a first karaoke song because we had live karaoke at our wedding reception. So we sang the Pete and Pete theme song. That's sort of like our song, our couple song. And um, so, yeah, he put that on there. That was really sweet. So, yeah, I feel like as soon as that playlist comes on, I get in this like hyper productivity mode, but also just like joy and care mode because I'm, I know that these songs came from other people. And since my work is about teamwork and being hive minded, it feels like really appropriate. So it's interesting how um, each playlist sort of has its purpose or something. I don't know, in my work. Another thing is, is I'm working on a white flag right now because I want to project onto it. My friend Lorraine's making a cool digital flag from video documentation from the installation that Benjamin Cook and I did at Wavepool. We had some um, dancers perform in our installation. And so Lorraine is making a digital video flag of that documentation that I'm gonna project onto a white flag during open studio. So I'm making this really interesting white flag. I'm kind of layering it up and I'm focusing on texture. And I cannot get over how hard it is for me to work with white. Like, I'm just like, I feel like I'm dragging my feet on it because it's not colorful. <laughs> and I, I know that it will be colorful because we're gonna project light. And I love, I love illuminated things because color and light go hand in hand. 
So I know it'll be amazing, but it's just like an uphill battle for me. It's pretty funny. And then I, um, I played with, cause I usually print out my shapes that I use to sew and I assemble them after I've printed them and it's like kind of tedious. And, um, but I don't have a printer here and I, I haven't been able to find one yet. I've been trying to figure out if I'm gonna use a library or staples or something. I print out a lot of stuff as an artist. And so I was trying to figure out what to do and I brought a projector with me because I knew I wanted to project Lorraine's video onto this flag. So I realized that I could just project the shapes onto the wall and then trace them. I didn't anticipate that the Sharpie would bleed through the tracing paper and now I'm gonna have to find a way to get Sharpie off the wall. But the process was a fun discovery. Um, it was a super productive day, went to those artist talks, I was nervous about getting home, and it kind of was in this, like, weird factory part of town. The gallery itself was really cool, really unusual and kind of cool, unique. It was like a brick, exposed brick, like, old factory studio warehouse kind of vibe. Um, so the gallery was super cool, but... It was weird because I couldn't find it. And then people were waving at me from the roof. I couldn't see who it was because they were too far away. But I'm grateful to them because I never would have found it if they hadn't been waving at me from the roof. They, I must have just looked like somebody that was going to go to that event. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was in this weird like factory part of town and it was really dark and there was just like no bus stops and the train stops were like, you know, 15 minutes away and I would have been walking in the dark. So I was kind of like, Ugh. Um, so I took a lift, but it was super fun because I got to see the city at night, like the Brooklyn Bridge was all lit up and I could see the Statue of Liberty from afar all lit up. And so it ended up being like kind of a beautiful way to come home. So like I said, that I have nighttime events like this whole week. So this is kind of a new, like being by myself, I want to be safe. So we'll see. I hope I don't have to take $40 lifts every single night. There goes my grocery budget budget for the week on lift rides, but we'll see. We'll play it. We'll play it by ear. I'm just reading my notes to make sure. Oh, one more thing. I thought about tonight during those talks. Because I was I was sort of like engaging with the Brooklyn art scene um that you know, the residency has put this schedule together for me. And I was thinking about like, what if I was putting together a residency for somebody in Cincinnati, like what events would I put together for somebody else? And, or I almost wondered like, if I could sort of create my own residency within my own city for myself or my husband or anybody else. Um, that was kind of a fun and interesting thought that I started to kind of noodle and dream over. That's all. I am um, getting ready to actually go to um, like Manhattan. I want to go to the Museum of Art and Design to see the garmenting show. It's like garment as art. So it's like, I've been like waiting to go to this show. Um, so yeah, I've been here for like a week and a half and I've only been in Brooklyn because that's all I've been able to manage and have time for. So I'm going to, so that's the number one thing I want to do is go to that show. But if I do other things, that's cool too. But I'm going to show you the crazy stuff I've been keeping in my purse. Um, so I always have a backup mask because so many things require masks here. I have this little bag of tissues and a couple of cough drops because it's happened to me like two or three times where I just got like a weird tickle in my throat or allergies. And don't you feel like <laughs> See, don't you feel like it's Murphy's Law that like when you're trying so hard not to cough, that's when you cough the most? Um, like, it's like thinking about it. Like, you're just like, don't cough, don't cough, don't cough. And then all of a sudden you just like can't stop coughing. It's some sort of a weird psychological thing that I have. But I feel like with COVID, like if you cough, like everybody's like terrified of you. Um, so I bring a cough drop, a couple of cough drops, just in case I get in one of those weird moments where I'm like on the train, I can't get off. I'm going to have a coughing fit. So yeah, it's a weird thing. Um, this is a book I'm reading right now that I'm really obsessed with. It's a book on Dick Higgins' work, life and work. And I'm keeping it in a plastic bag because sometimes it like rains or whatever, or just weird stuff gets in the bottom of my purse. And then um, these are, I made these booklets for 
when um, my friend, my friends Cassie and Emily kind of helped me pull this together before I left. So it's just like a small 15 or 16 page booklet about my work. So if I meet anybody in the art community that um, interests me, I printed a hundred of these. So I just, I keep it on me. And then there's also um, business cards in here. Um, so if I um, need to network, <laughs> I've got myself covered. Um, and then I've been crocheting um, streamers from, I did this project in 2019 called Blink that I, it just really impacted me, it still does. So all the leftover streamers that I've been storing for years, I've been crocheting. So I've been keeping um, a couple of these on me, like I separate them by color and then I keep a hook on me and sometimes, so I just don't like wasted time. So sometimes I read, sometimes I crochet, sometimes I post to social media. Um, because my literally everything I do here, it takes like an hour to an hour and a half to get anywhere. So I always have weird stuff to do. My husband's the same way. Like he always has like his drawing kit. Okay, I never go anywhere without ibuprofen. You just, I just never do. I always have a backup granola bar just in case. I've been keeping an umbrella on me because it is springtime and it will just like spontaneously rain. Um, Okay, this has been huge. My husband gave me these before I, could, I left and you buy them at like airports and stuff. They're like backup batteries for your phone. I have three on me because my phone is like how I get directions and stuff. So if it goes down, like, ooh, um, it's not good. So I have three of these charged at all times on me. And then I also have like a charger cord so I could charge my phone, so. Um, let me just see if there's anything else. Backup lipsticks and chapsticks. Oh, I always have, I have two different sets of headphones that I always have on me because I have been listening um, to books on tape. And like I said, I've been editing social media videos and stuff on the train, so. Um, cash. I never use cash in Cincinnati and I've been keeping a lot of cash on me here. Um, a lot of places like encourage it, like they give you discounts if you pay with cash. Um, and also a lot of street people take cash. So that's been kind of surprising to me that I'm using a lot of cash. So yeah, those are sort of, and of course I have like my wallet and my keys, but those are sort of some critical, <laughs> critical elements that I've been bringing with me that I just thought it'd be fun to share. yesterday <clears throat> I probably did a little too much <laughs> um, I went to the Museum of Art and Design and I had this um, I think it's called like Alliances of Museums Alliances of America Museums or something I can put a little thing um, and you get either get discounts or you get in like totally free it was recommended for this residency that we get this membership and so that's cool so I got in free and I, um, I had a blast. I actually went to the had three shows. They had this like flower show and they had this, um, show about this artist who created this sort of like otherworldly furniture, um, that was like really bright colored and like textural. And then the garmenting show, obviously I was like really ready for that one. I bought the catalog like months ago because the garment class that I teach is very much this like hybrid of art and um, and garment and that's what this whole show was about um, and it was really interesting there's definitely some 
it got me thinking about a lot of things for this class that I'm really excited about. But my Garmin students have a show up right now and they used st some similar strategies that were in this show. Like the, like our show had like floating arms and this show had like floating arms. And I was like, what are the odds? Cause they hadn't seen that. So, so I was really proud of my students cause I felt like they did a really compelling install. And I went to this and it, you know, I felt like a lot of the things my students had done were were on a similar level, um, which you know made me feel really proud. So then I went to see Ernesto Neto's work up at, um, again, I'll drop the name of the gallery because I am spacing on it, but it was in Chelsea. It was like 25 minutes away. Oh, no, no, no. After I went to the garment show, I came out and got this like giant smoothie and sat in the park and it was across the street and drank it. And it was really nice and relaxing it was, and I was starving. So because I am allergic to gluten, it's like hard to find restaurants on the fly that I'm not going to have like some kind of reaction to. So, so that was really fun. So then I went to Chelsea and I, um, saw the Ernesto Neto show. I've again, I've been studying his work for years maybe decades. Um, I've always been a big fan. Um, what was interesting that I wasn't expecting was how important smell was to his work. I've always had a visual take. I've never been in the physical room with it. He was using a lot of spices. One room, it was, I think it was curry powder. And even with a mask on, it like was really intense. And he actually like made a painting with the curry powder. Um, but every room you walked in had a different smell, which was really interesting. But he had this room in the upstairs that was connected to a skylight and it just kind of felt like paradise or something. It was beautiful. I could have stayed there all day. It just felt so peaceful. I think it was all the plants and the direct sunlight and then the smells and yeah, it was very transcendent. And then I walked over to Printed Matter. That was, a, it was like a 13, 14 minute walk maybe um, and bought some Flux's books. I can't help myself. <laughs> Uh, I bought something from Flux Fest in Japan. I bought a poetry book from Dick Higgins and then also like some kind of an interview between, um, it was like a pamphlet. I have something in my eye. I did, um, or sorry, it was an interview between like Jeffrey Hendricks and, um, Dick Higgins. And honestly, if I'd found more Flux's stuff, I probably would have bought it. And I was like, do you have a Flux's section? And they were like, no. Oh gosh. Uh, and then I bought Clint a little gift because Clint has been working so hard. Um, you know, he's been, so peak, our gallery peak is in a show at the CAC for small art spaces. And Clint and I have been planning and working on it and talking with our artists for like, probably like six or seven months. And so I'm flying home for this, um, on a week from today, I'm flying home to go see this show because we work so hard on it. And you know, the Cincinnati art scene has been so separate because of COVID. And I just want to celebrate how amazing the Cincinnati art scene is and all the artist run spaces. And, um, and I want to celebrate Clint's hard work. My goodness. Like he's just been there like all day, every day, like setting this stuff up. And I'm just, I'm just really proud of him. You know, like I was nervous to like, to leave all this and, um, he's just been managing it like a pro and he's just been working so hard and he's been sending me process pictures. I've been trying to help him remotely and it all is looking so good. And, um, yeah, I just, I'm just proud to be his wife. So, uh, so I got Clint a little, little gift, just a little one. Um, so then I took a train to Times Square so I could see Nick Cave's um, he has these like mosaics of his sound suits that are underneath Times Square. Um, and it's a, it's a lot, there's a lot of them and there's even like videos of them and stuff. And, uh, it was cool. Cause there were, there was a lot of people who were stopped to look at them. It took me a while to find them. Like this train station was huge. And I was just walking around like, where are the mosaics? And I finally found them and they're beautiful and really well lit for a subway station. Uh, and I got a police officer to take my picture with them. It was kind of funny. And, um, yeah, it was sweet because a lot of people were like looking at them and enjoying them. You always wonder that with public art, like are people stopping to look at these, you know? So yeah, those were cool. And then I walked up into Times Square, which is always, it's always jarring. It always feels like you're in a movie or something every time I go. <laughs> but um, I really needed for the studio today, I really needed some wire. And so I, literally I was like, I wonder if there's a hardware store in Times Square. <laughs> 
So I just looked, Google mapped it, and there was one like 11 blocks away. It was the most like narrow, claustrophobic uh, hardware store I've ever been in. Like it was, I felt like I was gonna get swallowed by it or something. But um, so I did find it, and I did. Um, sorry, I'm not awake yet. And I I did get some wire, but it wasn't as thick. I, if, if I was somewhere else, I probably would have gotten a thicker wire, but that wasn't an option. So I went with what they had. And it's enough to get me started because what I want to do is kind of a test. I don't even know if it's going to work. Um, so by this point, I was literally starving. I think throughout the day, I was hoping just to find some place that had like a salad or something. Um, like I said, I didn't anticipate how hard it is to be gluten free, you know, cause like you can grab a slice of pizza anywhere in New York, but I can't eat pizza. <laughs> so I can't eat gluten full pizza. Um, so I, so I went to the, the Starbucks in Times Square cause I was so tired by this point and I was like, I definitely need a coffee. And, um, and then I was like, Oh, I'll just get, so I ended up getting like these egg white I think they're for like the keto diet or something. It was like kale and egg white, I don't know, like patties or something. And then I got like a cheese box um, cause I was just so hungry. Um, and then I sat in Times Square and I people watched and I ate this bizarre meal <laughs> from Starbucks. Uh, but it was actually, it was really fun. Um, and then I got home and I ordered some Instacart of groceries cause I was just too tired to do anything. And I know it's gonna be crazy the next week because I have open, I have an open studio event at the gallery that I'm in. Um, uh, like two days after I get back from visiting at home, and I just want to have a lot of stuff made. So I'm gonna be at the studio a lot. I have all these meetings and events and stuff. So it's just gonna be crazy. So I just was like, screw it. I'm just gonna order a bunch of groceries. So I've been packing and cooking my food a lot um, because a, it's definitely cheaper, but b, it's like I just don't have a lot of options with my gluten problem. So I'm getting my shoes on. Um, also yesterday, this lady comes up to me and she goes, I have never met anybody that could coordinate their hair, their shirt, their shoes in their bag. And I was like, Oh, well, <laughs> weird sounds outside. Um, so that was cute and fun. Um, yeah. So I don't know on my mind all day yesterday, I kept thinking about how I've wanted this like my whole life. Like I've wanted just a chunk of time in my life where I could just put my work first. And I've always wondered like what kind of person I would be if I got to have that opportunity. I hope so I'm putting so much pressure on myself. Like, yeah, I just, I hope that I make the most of it. And, um, yeah, and I hope, I hope to be authentic and to work hard and I don't know. <laughs> So today I am, I wanted to leave like an hour ago, but I just couldn't get out of bed because I was just so tired. I'm excited. So these are shoes that I sell and I needed some new shoes for New York. So I was like, mm, I'm just going to take a pair of these. Clint has a pair and I was going to, I have a pair with this print that's like sassy, like they're pointy women's shoes or I don't know, pointy fancy shoes. Um, I, I've never had the sneaker version of this print but it's always fun to put on new shoes, right? <laughs> I'm putting some insoles in them right now because uh, my feet, it's a lot of walking. I've walked more in the past two weeks than I've walked in like a year. So yeah, I have a, I, I have a meeting with a curator today that I'm really excited about and I'm just gonna work really hard in the studio today and then I'm going to a presentation at the residency and then I'll probably go home and pass out. <laughs> I always like how I start these videos looking like really like ready to go um, and then I end looking like I've <laughs> been through the ringer because I'm usually like gone like from like I left this morning at like eight or nine uh, and I don't know what time it is 10 to 10 and I haven't even had dinner yet <laughs> it's just because like it takes forever on the train to get back but it's fine. Um, so long day. So I got to the studio kind of early because I knew I had a meeting um, today and I wanted to have some stuff together. And then um, also I'm having an open studio 
July 3rd and 4th and I'm I want to make a ton of stuff for it and I even thought about like bringing some old stuff to show but I want to give myself the challenge to make some new stuff just see what can come out of it I don't know I'm going home a week from today and in theory I could bring back a few flags with me I can't decide I really feel like I don't know we'll see uh, so I had that meeting. It was really good. Um, I really loved her like energy and enthusiasm and I felt like she really got my interest in sort of alternative art spaces and time-based work and like she showed me some artists that she that made her think of me and they were like amazing and I look forward to researching them. So yeah, that was it was really like I felt like it was just really positive conversation and when she left I felt I was like it felt like a high note. I was ready to get back to work. <laughs> and then I went to the residency to see a, um, I'm not even sure what you would call it. It was sort of like a finale to another artist's residency. Um, sort of like an artist talk slash presentation slash performance. It was really cool because she had um, like all this food that was, um, personal to her they were from different countries and like on the food table she had a plate full of cigarettes and she was like you have to smoke outside but drink inside and it was like I loved her um brazenness um but so it was it was a ballsy talk like presentation like she sort of challenged what um what the purposes of a residency and and how the funding is used and how it helps artists and uh, at the end of the day, I think it's just important to challenge things and question things, but it's kind of hilarious to like challenge something that you're presenting for. Um, like she was sort of presenting the culmination of her residency, challenging if a residency actually helps artists or not. Um, but I thought like everybody raised really interesting points and, um, and it was a great opportunity for me to meet some of the other residents and talk to them. There's so many interesting people here. And I was actually talking to someone from Japan who happened to live in Gifu at the same time that I did. Um, he was going to college there and I was teaching English there. And I was just like, what a small world. It, and this has been happening to me a lot lately. Like I found out that an artist that we had at peak once and who had a show at the, um, the Westin in Cincinnati uh, this year, um, she has a studio in the same studio as me and I'm really looking forward to like talking with her and hanging out with her and then randomly on the street in the middle of Manhattan yesterday I ran into a mutual friend so my friend Grace has a friend named Lucky Stiff who I brought into the performance class once and is amazing um, I love following Lucky's work but I just randomly ran into them on the street <laughs> and I was like Lucky? It's like a million oh my gosh, people in somebody. Manhattan and I ran into somebody that I knew and I just feel like I've been making all these weird little connections lately. It's really bizarre and amazing. Um, so one thing I talked about a lot with the curator visit today was like that balance of like, how do you manage making a ton of art? Because I don't often have that kind of time to dedicate to my work and going to see as much as you can to sort of feel inspired and um, and see what's going on in the art world around you. And so that was, a, that was helpful because that's something that I, that's been a struggle for me. Like I, this morning, I, it was hard to get up. Uh, I just, I think I, I think I did too many things yesterday, all good stuff, but I think like, I just, I think I need to find a, a balance where I'm taking care of myself because I don't want to hit burnout in the middle and then, you know, kind of have to recover from burnout. So I think I got to find some kind of a balance of making a ton of work and feeling, cause I feel like I love getting like, I've been doing six to eight hour days in the studio and loving every second of it. Just like feeling really productive and in the zone and processing my work. It's been a blast. Um, and, but I've also loved some of the things I've seen and experienced and so yeah, it's a, uh, it's a weird dilemma. And like I mentioned before, I feel like I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself to just like do everything, see everything, get everything done. And um, I think I need to have more realistic expectations of like, I'll see as much as I can. I'll get done as much as I can. Uh, and it's okay to have some rest time. So uh, I did go home in the dark tonight and I did okay. I did get confused on the train a little bit, but I did get home, no problems. 
Uh, and I have a new favorite corner store because it has a cat, a cute little cat that lives in there. So yeah. So it's Saturday and I did have some things that I was going to try to do today. I was going to try to go to an open studio that some of my other residents are in. And I was going to try to go to this idea party thing that uh, my roommate sent me that she was going to go and then she couldn't go. And I don't know. I may still try to go to it. I'm not sure. I'm just feeling like I pushed myself a little hard this past week. Um, like I, I knew I, I'm, I'm good at pushing myself mentally and emotionally. I'm not used to pushing myself so physically. So I, you know, my studio is like at the bottom of a hill from a train station. So I often have to like run up this hill and I usually have all this heavy stuff on me and my studio is two floors up. My apartment's three floors up. Um, so I'm, I've gotten like a lot more physical activity than I'm used to. And it's good. Like physical activity is good. Um, but you know, it's better when you like do it incrementally, you build up to it. And, um, you know, yesterday I was so tired after I went on this field trip that was amazing, but then I had to go just see a movie just so I could like sit down for a little bit and rest. And when I got home, like my shins were killing me and like my blisters have blisters and I have decent shoes. I've just been doing like a lot of physical activity. And so l last night I just had to go to bed. I mean, I just like, I came home, I ate dinner, I went to bed and then I slept in kind of late and I've just been trying to take it easy today so far. But then I had a meeting um, with my friend Grace on a few things. We were like catching up and brainstorming future projects and talking about her shape language in my work and um, a project that I'm gonna do with her um, that's kind of a teaching thing. And um, that was so nice. I like feel so energized. It's one of those things where like you didn't know you needed something until you did. Like um, it's, <laughs> we talked for like three hours. Grace and I have never been able to talk for a short amount of time. We always have to talk for like ever. Um, so I feel like we don't get to do it as often because we're both very busy people, but it's always so nice when I get to catch up with her. It's like a real treat. Um, so yeah, so I didn't expect to talk to her for so long, but I feel like it was like exactly the medicine that I needed. Like I just feel really energized and excited and um, yeah. So I just, I wanted to show like the realness of this that like I do want to push myself. I do want to have like an important experience and I need to find some kind of a balance of like figuring out the things that I should do and I want to do and time for the studio and um, some time for rest because I don't want to burn out like mid-June. Um, so yeah, so I'm trying to weigh out if I should go to this idea thing tonight. It would end at midnight and I don't love the idea of coming home at midnight by myself. Um, but uh, it does sound cool. It sounds like something, you know, I don't know that I would have picked this out on my own um, but now that I've been offered a ticket, like I'm kind of into it. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to challenge myself and go and maybe be physically tired or if I should stay home and get some stuff done here and then tomorrow go to the open studio and go to the studio because I've got so much to do before my open studio, open studio. So TBD. But yeah, so it's a... It's a lot. Um, this residency is a lot in the best way, but like finding that, finding a space that I can sustain. Rest in my little feeties and all those little blisters. Mm -hmm.